Hello, and welcome to the Ketogenic Diet Show. I'm your host, Mary Beauchamp, registered nurse and ketogenic diet coach. And I'm happy to introduce you to Suzanne Grace. You can find Suzanne at www.graceyoga.com. Suzanne has an extensive background in the performing arts. As an award-winning choreographer, artistic director of her own contemporary dance company, a professional dancer and dance teacher. She also has been active in the healing arts as a massage therapist, yoga, and meditation teacher. She's now a certified quantum life licensed spiritual practitioner and interfaith minister. I'm excited to have Suzanne here with us today and to be talking a little bit about her own personal journey with her own health and how she was able to overcome some very pesky um, annoying, lingering issues that brought her in to see me. And from there, we were able to uncover sort of the root of what was going on. And part of that was not only nutritional and dietary influences, um, but as you know, if you've been working with me for any period of time or in one of my coaching courses, you know that there's a large component of healing that has to do with the energy body with the emotional um, energy and stress that we that we, we all um, have to endure at some level. And so how can we really become the master of our own energy body? And so that's what's so exciting about hearing Suzanne's story. And I'm excited to um, have her share with us how she was able to overcome her health challenges. So with no further ado, Thank you so much for joining us today, Suzanne. Thank you, Mary. I'm really glad to be here and just t talk to you and your uh, audience about my journey and the work that I do today as a quantum life coach. Um, I experienced, um, my health challenge was skin issues and it happened throughout my adult life and then really flared up about, I think maybe five years ago. and it felt so debilitating because it was something that nobody could tell me what it was from. And I started working with you and other healers. And also I started at that time doing more inner work, uh, work with my, the spiritual aspect of my life. And at the time I became a licensed spiritual practitioner. And uh, during that time then I also became a life coach and I learned a lot of amazing processes. And so from my dance background, I created a formula that I call the Trinity Waltz because we're all dancing through life. Sometimes we stumble, <laughs> sometimes we're out of rhythm, and sometimes we're in the flow. And I feel that life is a dance. And so the Trinity Waltz for me was combining the body knowledge through yoga and movement, the mind through different quantum processes and pulling out weeds of old beliefs and planting new seeds. And then the third of the Trinity Waltz is our spirit or our soul. And as a spiritual practitioner and interfaith minister, I work with a lot of just remembering that we are connected to something bigger, a bigger expression call it universal presence divine creator spirit source doesn't really matter what name but i discovered in my healing that it was really important for me to connect to that place within me that was wise and loving and forgiving so that's where the trinity waltz came in wonderful and so do you have a particular sort of portal in which you access this place in yourself? I do it through meditation, number one, and through um, prayer and blessing. Um, I teach uh, my clients uh, affirm it, what's called affirmative prayer, which is a very easy way to connect, first of all, in gratitude mm -hmm. with what we do have and in gratitude for anticipation of the good that's coming. So a lot of the um, neuroscience today talks about that, talks about the importance of 
elevated emotions. Um, I'm sure you've probably talked about that. How important it is to be um, in a state of gratitude before something occurs that you're wanting because that's what attracts it back to us. If we're just wishing and hoping for something to change or wishing and hoping for a healing or I wish this illness would go away, we can't push things away. We have to invite wholeness and wellness in. So that's how I, I work with people. Mm, that's great. I love that. So <clears throat> there's a way to attract what it is that you want into your life as opposed to resisting what you don't want, which feels a lot more um, it's enjoyable <laughs> and uh, a little bit less effort and more pleasant all yeah. in all. Yeah. yeah. We all have um, limiting beliefs, and that's something that I, I was very aware of as a dancer. I'll, I'll tell you this story. I, I wore, in my dance career as a choreographer and uh, artistic director in the Midwest, I had a dance company, and we were fairly successful, but I wore this badge, and that badge was Starving Artist, because I was told from a very young age, oh, you'll never make money at, in the performing arts. You know, you'll have to have a real job. And so I did, I, I, I took that on and I thought, okay, I'm gonna suffer for my art. And I always had an extra job. And what that did, that starving artist badge did for me was it, it created a limitation. It created frustration. It created a feeling that I never had enough. And I, once I learned more metaphysical um, ideas and ways of thinking, and expanding my awareness of what's really available, I was able to break through that limiting belief and plant a new seed of, of more, of abundance, of uh, there's more than enough, um, that life isn't against me, life is for me. There's many different affirmative ways of thinking that we can start to expand our, our limited thinking and it opens us up to, to possibilities for our life, for healing for a new job, for a new relationship, whatever it is, there's always more that we can access. We access it not only through our mind, but through our spirit. And that's again where the Trinity Waltz, for me, comes in. Mm, I love it. That's great. So we have to be careful what we wear on our shirts, on our badges, and what, <laughs> what we tell ourselves, right? What is the stories that we are making up and those become our beliefs and then our reality. So is there a particular um, practice that you would evoke or um, teach to a client that would help them to change an old belief that is not serving them? Well, first of all, gratitude is the number one, uh, what I call sacred medicine. When we can be grateful for whatever is showing up, the good, the bad, and the ugly, when we can understand that everything that comes up is, is a teacher, mm -hmm. and we can use that information to grow. Again, we're not pushing something away. We're inviting something better to show up or to grow. And whether that's in our consciousness or something in our physical world. And um, I, I liken the story of... Um, how elephants are trained. And many people know this, but elephants are trained with a shackle around their foot, one of their feet. And that shackle's attached to a chain that's about 10 feet, 12 feet long. That chain is then attached to a, a stake in the ground. So from a very young age, the elephant only knows to go about 15 feet and then it stops because that's how far the chain is. At some point, the trainer removes the chain and the elephant still only goes 15 feet hmm. and stops. Wow. And so why? Well, it's been mentally conditioned to have a limitation. And so it doesn't know that it can go further. And so when I think about that, and I think about what limitations do we have on ourselves that keep us from stepping into that new experience? because we all have limitations, old limiting beliefs, patterns, or behaviors, and some of them are unconscious. Most of them, I would say, are probably <laughs> unconscious. Yes. The hardest part is realizing that you have it, and once you then realize that, you're, that you have it, 
you can do something about it. You can. We're always a choice. And that's the beautiful thing about being human. And, you know, you've heard the phrase, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. Mm -hmm. Yes, and our human experience is, is one that we're always a choice. So we can choose, if we notice that we're getting uptight or we're getting stressed out about something, we can have that moment, take a breath. Wow, I'm, I'm getting triggered again by this. This is an old memory. You know, Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe says that um, we have, I think it's like 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day that run through our awareness. And 90% of them are from the past. Hmm. They're memories. And most of them aren't even true. <laughs> right. Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about the same, same thing, right? That we're programmed until the age yeah. of seven and we're like sponges taking all this information in with no filter and then we spend the rest of our adult life trying to filter out the things that maybe shouldn't have gotten in or that we don't want yes. to have really running our life anymore. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of new information out there in the field of quantum physics and um, epigenetics, if you will, that, that is really pointing to the scientific evidence and research behind how our old beliefs and our current thoughts are creating either wellness or disease in our body. So one of the first and most simple um, things to do really in the work that I do is to, is to just look and see what's not working in your life. If you wanna know where your limiting beliefs are actually wreaking havoc, just look to the places that aren't working. Look to the places where you have discomfort. Look to the places where you're unhappy and triggered and frustrated and angry and you're not feeling open and loving and at ease. Um, those are great clues as to where you might choose to do a little bit of work in your life. And if so, if you were ready to dive into that part of your life that may be uncomfortable, what might you suggest somebody do with, with those places that are painful? Well, there's many different um, processes, and I was thinking today, if we have time, I'll lead um, you and everyone that's listening through a process that drops us into our heart space, mm. because our heart space is our authentic place of, um, of wisdom. We can't solve a problem with the same mind that created it. We've probably heard that before. So when we're in a state of frustration, it's like having a fist in front of our face and we're just, that's what we focus on is that issue, that problem, that relationship, that thing that's not working, my body weight, whatever it is. But if we only focus on that, we're missing the solution that's outside of it, that quantum field. And so some of the processes I do, we drop into that heart space, we drop into the breath and allow the, the solutions to appear or, or a different perspective or a lightening of something. And so I'd like to lead you through that process if, if we have time to do that. That would be great. Do you want to do that now? Yes. Okay, excellent. I'm excited. I'm going to get comfortable because I'm going through it too with you all. So go ahead. All right. So this is uh, one of the uh, heart math processes that helps us to think outside the box and maybe come up with a different solution to something that may be on our mind. And so I invite you, if it's comfortable, to close your eyes and simply acknowledge an issue or a problem that you're experiencing right now in your life. Just bring it to your awareness. It could be a health issue or a relationship or financial, doesn't matter. Acknowledge an issue or a problem and also notice any feelings or attitudes or emotions you have around it. You can also write it down if you want to remember it. So just take a moment for that. an issue and the feelings around it. Good. 
Now, drop your awareness from the mind down into the heart space. And in this idea of heart breathing, we're going to bring the breath. Imagine the heart in the center of your chest. And imagine that heart is like a lung. And you breathe in and out, radiating an energy from your heart. So just focus on this heart-focused breath for about a minute. Just use your imagination, easily breathing in, expanding that heart and breathing out. And while you're breathing in this heart energy, activate the feeling of appreciation or caring for someone in your life. Activate the feeling of appreciation or caring for someone in your life. And continue the heart breath while you're activating that feeling. Good. And then, just gently ask yourself from this place, what might be a more effective attitude, action, or solution to that issue or problem I thought of initially. Just ask yourself, what might be a more effective attitude, action, or solution to this? And quietly observe any subtle changes in perception, feelings. And then commit to sharing, to sustaining beneficial shifts and then acting upon new thoughts. Good. And then take another breath and gently open your eyes. And then what I usually <clears throat> have my clients do, if you wrote down the issue and the feeling around it, or you'll remember it, is you then kind of say out loud, I went from what to what, so that you observe the shift. So for instance, I went from, and you don't have to say what the issue was, I went from the feeling of frustration and a little bit of impatience to calm. Ah, would you like to share what you went from what to what? Sure. Um, so I went from fear to more of a state of ecstasy where I could feel like a tingling up my spine nice. and like a really euphoric body sensation. So it was very different. It was very open and joyful and pleasurable as opposed to being very closed and kind of feeling constricted. Yeah, so. beautiful. Isn't that interesting? And when I do this in a group setting, I we hear all like very powerful shifts. So I just want to point out that this is a simple process you can do on your own. And again, it, it, it taps us into that intuitive nature. It taps us into that heart space. And it taps us into our divine essence of who we really are. That's where the solutions are. That's where the answers is. That's where the support is. And so I, I just, I love sharing that process. Mm, yeah. That's beautiful. Yes, I do believe that the body holds the answers to 
all of the questions of the mind. So if we can step out of the constructs of the mind and the structures and belief systems that we're programmed to to have and, and that we do have, whether we like it or not, um, we can ask the body to help us navigate through the world, particularly the heart, um, which often isn't in charge. You know, we're, we're run by this lifestyle, this sort of hurried, you know, have to produce faster, more, make more, do more, um, that we've all been ingrained with. And to step out of that very chaotic energy of what I call life out there is, um, is a practice that yes. takes a little bit of intention. So it does not have to be complex and it doesn't have to take all day. It could be three minutes in the morning, just so simple to set the stage for a whole different way of moving throughout the day. I do, um, I do bookends of the morning and the evening with the morning is, is when I, before I get out of bed, I do a prayer and a blessing to my body. And then I open myself to what magnificent thing is, am I going to contribute today to the world? And I open my arms and I step out of bed and I just open myself to be of service, whatever that is. And then, um, in the evening, I have a gratitude journal by my bed, and I write down my gratitudes, and I also write down five successes that I did. And it can be something very small. And, and then I savor those successes. I take a moment, and I just, ah, yeah, that felt really good that I made that phone call today or that I answered that email. And those kinds of things start to shift our, our awareness of, of all the good that we have, and that just expands our good even more. That's really beautiful. So I love the idea of the gratitude writing and the journal by your bed for when you go to sleep mm -hmm. because then you really refresh your mind with the things that were good and that did help and make others and yourself feel good um, and how you made a contribution to the world. I think that's really beautiful. It's so important. Um, yeah, if the mind is left unattended, especially at night, it goes it just goes to the dark side, you know, it, it does. And we as conscious individuals need to be the ones to redirect it. And it's like the, the elephant, you know, we have to retrain our mental tendencies because that's where it's always going to go. I mean, it's, it just is. So don't be surprised. Don't let yourself remain fixated on those things that make you feel bad because that's just what the mind does. It's part of our survival mechanism. It's built into our DNA. Um, and it did serve its purpose. It, it was the reason why we're, why we're here now and why we're still all alive. We have to give it credit and also do what we can to, um, mitigate the negative course that it can take us on if we're not, if we're not conscious and careful. Anything else you'd like to share about what it is that you do um, when you work with individuals one-on-one -on -one to help to deepen their their spiritual practices or awareness of themselves? Yeah, I um, because I do this idea of the Trinity Waltz, I try to incorporate um, either yoga or movement, something that, that fits a person's lifestyle. And um, also um, adding uh, prayer or blessing um, to a daily practice, having um, insp inspirational readings is really good. And you know, what are you listening to on the when you're driving? Uh, having different podcasts mm -hmm. <laughs> or um, CDs of, of inspirational talks is always great. Things that just keep reminding us, keep us in that loop, because as you said, it's so easy to just to fall off and go to um, the worry place or the, uh, the, the waiting for the other shoe to fall. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then also um, the breath always is a, is a huge part for me in my training. And um, just being aware, uh, you know, once we're aware of that our thinking t leads us to a certain place, just in that awareness is where the shift can happen and where our choice can be. But first, we have to even be aware that we're making those choices. And then it's not that difficult, really. And we have our support team. I was saying to my 
a friend the other day, I said, you know, who's on your team? I have my dentist, my doctor, my uh, massage therapist, I have my naturopath, I have my nutritionist, I have my yoga teacher, I have my uh, hairstylist, I have my coach, I actually have a life coach too. Um, I have all the support team that, that keeps my humanness in its track. And then I have my team that's the more ethereal the divine team, I call it. I have my angels or my um, prayer partner. I have my connection to my own divinity, um, to my belief system. So it's important to, to understand that we don't have to go through this alone, mm. that we have people there that have knowledge to support us. And that's a beautiful thing. Mm. That's that's great. It's so important. Um, we... If, if we are not getting the results that we want in our life, it is very, very important to get support. And so if you feel like you're struggling, reach out, ask friends, get help. There's lots of free help out there. If you start looking, you will find lots of resources, books and friends and clergy and spiritual healers and teachers and, um, of course, you know, there's always paid for help and, and coaches that you can hire to help you get the results that you want if you have the means to do so. Um, so please, 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 if you find yourself struggling in, with your health or with your um, just emotions or your spirituality, um, depression, anxiety, all of those things, you, you, I just really encourage you to, to start reaching out and looking and opening yourself up to what the universe might bring to you if you were just open and out of the way of that repetitive um, thinking that can bring you down and and into the sort of rabbit hole I call it of doom and gloom. So I have a rabbit hole too that I have to dodge on a regular basis, and <laughs> I haven't met anybody else who doesn't have one. So I've just gotten really good at navigating around it. Um, and it's like now I can just see it coming. I can feel it coming and I can um, take the, the two steps to the left or right to avoid it. But it takes a lot of practice. And so please get support if you're looking to um, fine tune your spiritual practices. In the work that I do, if you've been in any of my courses, there's at least 50% of the emphasis is on creating uh, these daily rituals and rhythms and, and practices that, that nourish and nurture your heart and your, um, your soul, really. And the other, there's only so much we can do with nutrition. There's only so much we can do with supplements and vitamins and health uh, practices of any kind without that component. So I firmly believe that if we don't address the whole energetic body as one whole being, um, we, we're really not seeing the whole picture of health and it all needs to be taken into consideration. So yeah, there's only so much we can do with prayer without changing our diet and our lifestyle and making different choices around food and, and all that kind of stuff. But it, it, that's probably half of it. And the other half is energetic and spiritual. So that is, um, one way that we can get the biggest result is to really look at all of those things together and start to incorporate new habits, new thoughts, new practices into our lives. So without any further ado, do you feel that there's anything else you'd like to add to this conversation? It's been so... It's been great. Beautiful. I appreciate it. And I thought I'd end with a Buddhist blessing. Oh, it's fantastic. a beautiful little prayer. It's a short prayer I do at the end of my yoga classes. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. And may you be happy. Namaste. Oh, thank you so much for joining us today, Suzanne. I really appreciate all that you've offered. And I look forward to working with you in the future. We're doing a few talks coming up so you can stay posted on uh, either my website www.ketogenicdietcoach.com, my Facebook group, Mary Beauchamp RN on Facebook, um, and also you can find Suzanne at www.graceyoga.com. 
If you'd like to find out more information about the ketogenic diet, please visit my website, www.ketogenicdietcoach.com. I have lots of information there that is accessible and free, as well as online programs and retreats. So check it out if you want to know more about what I'm up to. Namaste. There's a book called The Diamond Cutter, and in that book, he talks about 